Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is John, but my friends call me Glasscock. You guys can call me that if you want, or just John Glasscock. I don't really care what you call me, but today I'm gonna to be sharing with you all a video on how to lower your ping. This video has been requested by a subscriber of mine. I'm gonna be posting his comment here on the screen. If you guys wanna see a video from me or hear me talk about a specific subject, leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to make the video. Bear in mind, guys, I want to forewarn everybody watching this video, this is going to be a very wordy and long video with quite a bit of talking, just because there's a lot to discuss and a lot to explain, because this is a very complex subject that um, doesn't have a one-size-fit-all solution for everybody, just depending on what your network setup looks like, who your ISP is, what, um, where you live even determines it, so... Um, I'm going to do my best to kind of explain how this works and the possible solutions and things you can test with to hopefully uh, solve your issue. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into this. I did make a little list of things that will help keep me on topic here as I talk about these subjects and go along in this video. So potential causes for high ping can be lured down to three different things. And these are the three biggest things that stand out to me. And number one, the most important one is gonna be distance to travel. Number two is gonna be home network queuing and bandwidth. Number three is gonna be the line quality. So these are the three things. I'm gonna be talking about these things and discussing them. And I'm gonna be showing you guys some solutions to uh, these things as well. So let's talk about number one, distance to travel. I believe that in my subscriber's comment, he mentioned my speed test ping. I'm going to be showing you guys why that's kind of irrelevant and why that doesn't really impress me that much. As you can see, it is one millisecond, but this really doesn't tell me anything special other than I just, I'm really close to the server. That's all this means. I didn't set any kind of special settings on my router. I didn't, you know, do anything crazy. I don't have some special cable that gives me one millisecond. It's just me being close to this server. If you don't believe me, take a look at Comcast. Let's change the server. Comcast. See what it gives me, 14. Let's switch it up again. Let's try... Soft layer, they got a building in downtown Houston. It should be maybe around two or three. Two, okay. So as you can see, just depending on how close you are to the server, it's gonna determine what your ping time is. So if you live out in the boonies or you got satellite internet and your ping time is 100 milliseconds or 50 milliseconds, it could be because you're just far away from the speed test server. If you wanna know a more accurate representation of what your ping time is, I'm going to be showing you that now. Let's click off of this and let's go into our command. So one thing that you want to do is you want to go to IP config dash all, and you want to make a note of two different things. You want to make a note of your default gateway and you also want to make note of your DNS servers. Okay. So once you have those written down, we're gonna do a couple different things. First of all, we're going to ping our DNS server. To me, pinging the DNS server is a more accurate representation of what your ping actually is. Now, if this ping is particularly high, you might wanna look into changing up your DNS server. Um, I'm gonna leave a video in the description box below where you can see um, how to find the best DNS servers. I did make a video on that subject. I'm not going to be talking too much about that in this video, but as you can see, the uh, ping time to my DNS is one millisecond. Let's ping Google. You can see here we've got around close to, I'm not wearing my contacts today, uh, eight to nine milliseconds ping time. Now, here's a little gold nugget for you guys. Packet loss, this is really important. Packet loss is really the uh, determining factor on quality because ping time and quality are really closely connected. So if you see excessive packet loss, this may be 
an issue with your home network or it could be an issue with your ISP. If you wanna find out exactly which one it might be, try this. Ping, you remember I told you to write down your default gateway? Ping your default gateway. And what you're gonna see is the time should be around one millisecond. And if you experience zero packet loss, that's a good thing. What that means is that your um, equipment is operating as normal and there's no issues. If you experience excessive ping times on your uh, ping to your default gateway, you might wanna look into possibly replacing your router or you may want to look into uh, checking your cabling. Make sure you're doing this on a wired connection as well. I forgot to mention that. But yeah, and if you experience packet loss while pinging to a DNS server or to your ISP, that might have something to do with more on the ISP side and not so much your side. So you already know what to do in that situation, right? <laughs> so not too much elaboration there. I'm gonna let you guys in on another little gold nugget. If you all want to see a more in-depth representation of your packet loss and things like that, you can go to a website called dslreports.com. I've been promoting this website for a long time because I really like their tools that they have for uh, networking. They have a really great speed test tool and the two tools that you can use to determine and troubleshoot your ping is using line quality, but you do have to disable IPv6 on your router to use this, so I'm not gonna be doing that now. But the run ping one is probably the one you're gonna be the most interested in. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. So it's gonna ping a bunch of different servers all around the world, and it's gonna give you a calculated grade based off of all the different places that you pinged. We should get around an A plus. does take a moment, but I highly suggest you all check out this website. I'm not sponsored by this company or anything. I just really like their tools that they have. They're really good, so A plus. So like I said, distance to travel is going to be a huge determining factor in what your ping time is in both multiplayer gaming as well as speed testing. So ideally, the closer the server is or the closer the, uh, the P2P connection is, or um, the closer the speed test server is, the lower the ping number. And then the further the way it is, the higher. All right, so with that out of the way, let's move on to queuing and bandwidth. So one way to test and see if queuing might be the issue is to again use a DSL reports tool called speed test. It measures for something called buffer bloat. And if you experience really high buffer bloat times and it comes back as like C or D or F, try looking into QoS. I'm gonna leave a link down in the description box below because I'm gonna be, well, the, it may not be there yet, but I'm gonna be making a tutorial on QoS in depth and how to set up QoS algorithms for your home network. So if you see the link, click on it. If you don't, it's because I haven't made the video yet. But, Queuing and bandwidth, that's number two, okay? So look into QoS. If you want to, you can Google your router like Netgear R7000 or Asus AC1900 or whatever router you have and type in QoS and you can learn how to set up QoS rules for your network and see if it improves. Once you've done that, run another DSL report speed test and see if it improves. Number three is gonna be line quality. If you want to test for line quality, again, link in the description, there's a tool for that, line quality. And you can see if that might be the determining factor. So we know these three causes for high ping. What can we do to fix them? So I made a short little list down here on how to fix these things. Number one, to fix the distance to travel issue, there's two different things you can do. You can buy a NetDuma router. Their software on their NetDuma router allows you to essentially keep 
servers that are too far away from you or keep players out of your multiplayer lobbies from connecting to you. What this means is that your ping time is gonna be a lot lower. If you don't wanna buy a Netduma router, you can look into flashing your, uh, your own router with a software, or excuse me, a firmware, like an OpenWRT, a DB, DDWRT, or Tomato USB, and set up um, firewall rules, firewall rules, yes, to uh, block out certain IP ranges or certain servers that you don't want to be connecting to. You can do that. That's the more techie way to do it, but NetDuma is going to be the more consumer-friendly way of uh, handling things. Number two is going to deal with home network in queuing and bandwidth. That's going to be QoS. You can set up QoS algorithms on your home network, or you can call your internet service provider and try to request more bandwidth. If you've got people in your home that are using a lot of Netflix, Hulu, while you're gaming, that can definitely cause high ping times, okay? Number three is gonna to have to do with line quality, and that's gonna to be to call your internet service provider. If you find that when you run, let's say a line quality test or a ping test, and you're coming back with bad results, then I would definitely contact my ISP and let them know that that's a thing uh, because there's not a whole lot that you can do on that end. That's something that they would have to take care of. They could probably send a technician out to your host to look house to look at the wiring and maybe even look at the nodes that are connecting your home network to the actual service center and they would be able to diagnose and offer further assistance there, but there's not a whole lot that you can do on your end. So. Those are gonna be the three causes and the three solutions to lowering your ping. If you guys have any questions, definitely comment down below. All the links to the testing uh, tools that I talked about in this video will be linked down in the description box below. And like I said, guys, another thing, if you think that you're gonna go on YouTube and find some magical router or magical ethernet cable that's gonna fix all your problems, you are sadly mistaken. This is a much more complex issue than you think. And uh, if you have any questions, please guys comment down below. I'm really happy to answer anything for you all, but I'm getting kind of tired here. It's 2 a.m. and I got to get up for work tomorrow. So um, thank you all so much for all the support on the channel. We're almost to 10K. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and please rate the video and let me know what you all think and give me some constructive feedback. Thanks. Have a great day.